गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी थ्री टू डे सेवेंटीन जून टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री वी आर इन मॉड्यूल फाइव ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक एंड हाइब्रिड व्हीकल प्रोफेशनल इलेक्ट्रिक थ्री वी आर इन द लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ मॉड्यूल फाइव सो मॉड्यूल फाइव इज हाइब्रिड ड्राइव ट्रेन डिजाइन देर आर टू मेन टॉपिक सीरीज हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक ड्राइव ट्रेन एंड पैरल हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक ड्राइव ट्रेन so in lecture number 32 we have seen the charge control uh, action strategies of parallel hybrid electric drive train there we have seen two types of charge control one is max pps charge control second one is called as thermostat based on off control for pps today we are going to see in parallel hybrid electric drive train we are going to see the design of engine and pps so there are mainly three uh design uh, materials in case of uh, parallel hybrid electric drive train or three components uh, first one is engine second one is pps and third one which we are going to see uh, tomorrow in the last lecture of this module which is called as design of motor and other components so today we are going to see two component design one is called as engine and pps so engine is generally called as a primary power source for parallel hybrid electric drive train and pps is called as the secondary power source or bumper power source for uh, hybrid electric drive train parallel type uh, all this we are going to see or we are going to find in the book of ehsani module number 9 so ehsani is our textbook in between page number 267 to 274 we are going to find design of engine and design of pps related theory so we have seen this diagram many times this is the configuration of a parallel hybrid torque coupled drive train so we know there are uh, three inputs which are coming from the driver that is acceleration brake and direction this is the standard operation command and it is coming to the vehicle controller there are mainly two devices which are producing energy one is engine which is driven by petrol or uh, gasoline or diesel second one is peak power source which is a battery engine is generating mechanical energy output which is connected to the transmission by means of a clutch so if we open the clutch at the time engine power will not come to the transmission so you have to engage the clutch transmission gets mechanical power it comes to the torque coupler input secondary source is peak power source so generally uh, engine supplies continuously the power to the vehicle uh, for transmission but whenever too much power or bumper power is required at that time this peak power source or battery comes into the picture through motor controller the battery gives the electrical input to the motor motor converts the electrical energy into mechanical energy this is given to the torque coupler so torque coupler actually couples uh, the motor output mechanical power and engine output power and the total torque coupled uh, mechanical power is given to the final drive element from there the power goes to the Uh, wheels so this is the uh, traction part of uh, the parallel hybrid electric drive train now there are mainly four controllers as shown below uh, main controller of the vehicle is vehicle controller then there is engine controller which controls the throttling action of the engine and then there is the motor controller which controls how much power from the uh, battery will be given to the motor for conversion from electrical to mechanical then there is a brake controller because whenever we are saying Uh, there is control action so control for pps that is power source and control of brake both the things has to be controlled by the main vehicle controller so vehicle controller is the main controller and engine controller motor controller mechanical brake controller they are the sub controller so top is a vehicle controller and in hierarchy engine controller motor controller and brake controller they comes in the second now there are a lot of sensed elements so depending on the sensed elements vehicle controller decides uh actually the vehicle controller compares the uh, present uh, sensed elements and uh, the operation command and depending on that vehicle controller instructs the engine controller motor controller and mechanical brake controller how to uh, go ahead with the next uh, co control action so among the different sensed parameters there is engine speed there is crankshaft speed of the engine there is pps uh, of soc that means the state of charge and state of uh, energy of the peaking power source they are sensed uh, engine controller so throttle valve position it is sensed uh, how much air should go to the engine that is also sensed uh, sensed then among the brake parameters uh, how much is the brake fluid uh, pressure how much is the uh, braking line 
power and force all those things are sensed uh, in the tire also whatever brake calipers and all those things are there their pressure is also sensed anti lock braking system is there in the wheels uh, their status is also changed by various mechanical type of sensors or primary sensors so all these inputs actually are given to the vehicle controller and depending on the command operation or operation command uh, this vehicle controller decides how to control the engine or how to control the motor controller how to control the brake uh, as per the command operation and as per the uh, various uh, present status of the vehicle so this is the basic of mechanically coupled uh, parallel hybrid electric drivetrain now there are mainly uh, different powers so all the traction powers are shown here pl is the power uh, required to drive the vehicle forward that is the main traction power pl or it is called as a load power it is the addition of motor power pm and engine power pe so pe plus pm is equal to pl generally it happens in the forward driving if there is no regenerative braking and pm is actually produced from pppsc or pmc okay so pppsc is nothing but the secondary source that is having some efficiency 90% so if you multiply pppsc with eta m we are going to get pm so pm pe pl pppsc all these are generally related to the traction power there are two mechanical powers uh, one is the mechanical braking because it is having hybrid type of braking so hybrid braking means mechanical braking electrical braking uh, both are combined so for electrical braking the power is generated brake power is generated by the ppa source itself that is the uh, motor based braking which is called as pmb and for mechanical brake uh, pmf is the mechanical brake power okay so we know that mechanical brake is less efficient and electrical brake that is pmb this is more efficient in electrical brake there is another thing happens which is called as a regenerative braking which checks uh, takes some of the power from the output and charges the peak power source so with all this basic understanding we are going to go for uh, design parameters so we are going to see design of uh, drive train parametric design of drive train and then we are going to see uh, there are many components so what are the components we can find here design of engine power design of electric motor power uh, gear ratios of the transmission that is we generally give it, give it by eta power and energy capacity of the pps so these are the key parameters and exert considerable influence on the vehicle performance and operational efficiency however what we find that as initial steps in the drivetrain design so drivetrain is nothing but the addition of two power trains so in case of hybrid electric we are finding there is a engine based power train and there is a pps based power train combined uh, combining these two we call it a drivetrain so initial step in drivetrain design this parameter should be estimated based on the vehicle performance requirements so whatever is the performance on which road the vehicle will be run on which slope whether it is a city driving or it is a highway driving or village driving or it is going to be a jungle or hill driving depending on that uh, the vehicle drivetrain has to be designed so some car which are very much suitable for city driving maybe that will not be suitable for hill driving because every drivetrain is different keeping certain parameters in mind so such parameters may also be refined by more accurate simulations so for our simulation results which are we are going to show in the next slides there are certain graphs and all that we are going to explain there are certain basic assumptions so these are the basic assumptions a vehicle mass this includes actually all the load of the vehicle passengers uh, if there is any luggage everything together uh, vehicle mass is assumed to be 1500 kg which is a very reasonable assumption rolling resistance coefficient of the road is 0.01 so less amount of rolling resistance is assumed air density rho a 1.205 kg per meter cube so if in future whenever you will be going for designing uh, or matlab or simulink based design at that time all this uh, variables or constant that is rho a that is the air density how much is that okay so all those things uh, you have to remember and you can fit all these values uh, in your simulink based design in future front area of the vehicle assumed is 2 meter square is a passenger vehicle what we are assuming aerodynamic drag coefficient which is actually a function of humidity and temperature and all those things but we are assuming it to be 0.3 radius of the drive wheels r is equal to 0.2794 meter almost 0.3 meters uh, that is 1 feet that is the radius transmission efficiency from engine to drive wheel so starting from the engine to the drive wheel for the primary source it is eta te okay that is equal to 0.9 so transmission for by engine it is efficiency is 
and transmission efficiency from the motor to the driver's ETA TM that is transmission by motor it is 0.95 so we are finding from this assumptions that is uh, the PPS or motor is more efficient than the engine powertrain the engine should be able to support uh, sub oh sorry engine should be able to supply sufficient power to support the vehicle operation at normal constant speed both on a flat road and on a mild road grade without the help of the PPS. So mild road grade means in this case we have taken something like 5% uh, gradation is there 5% means 0.05 uh, so tan theta is equal to 0 0.05 from there you can find theta. So on that kind of road with mild grade that means 5% uh, grading and on a flat road how the engine is only only engine is driving the vehicle uh, without any support from the PPS that we are going to see by some kind of graph. So this is a standard parametric design of engine power graph which is shown here uh, and this graph has to be explained in detail and this might be asked in the exam for uh, 6 to 8 marks. So the engine should produce an average power which should be greater than average load power when the vehicle operates in a stop and go operating pattern. So whatever load power is there, uh, load power plus some kind of losses are there together uh, that power has to be produced by engine. Whatever is the load power requirement, if engine produces only that much power, vehicle will not go forward because there is aerodynamic drag, there is a rolling resistance, there is gradient uh, loss of the vehicle. So always the vehicle has to produce a little bit more power required than the load power. So that is what is told here. Engine should produce an average power which should be greater than the average load power when the vehicle operates on a stop and go operating pattern. Stop and go operating pattern we find in city where very high speed driving by the vehicle is not possible we have to stop and go because traffic is more in the city under such case a requirement of a normal highway driving at a constant speed on a flat road or mile gate uh, power need is expressed as okay so there is a formula the formula uh, this formula is given by uh, for uh, power in normal highway driving at a constant speed on a flat road or a mild grade road so here you can see this graph here mild grade is called as 5% grade so what is the average power on a flat road it is given by PE P means power E stands for engine V divided by 1000 eta TE so this parameter this uh, equation we have seen previously so eta TE is the engine transmission efficiency so that means from the engine to the drive wheel V is the velocity of the vehicle in traction MGFR, MGFR is the forward rolling resistance loss, half rho C A V square, this is nothing but aerodynamic loss where V is the uh, forward going speed of the vehicle. So these things are the losses, main losses and there is another loss which is called as MGI. So MGI is the loss which is due to the gradient, so gradient is I, so I is equal to tan theta is equal to 5%, that means tan theta is equal to 0.05. So whatever we are finding is this is the requirement of a normal highway driving constant speed on a flat road minimum this much power we require actually a little bit more power we are requiring because this much power will be wasted only to overcome the loss okay and after this whatever more power we are generating in PE that will be used for traction unit is kilowatt. So figure in the right side shows the load power versus speed graph so x axis you are finding vehicle speed y axis you are finding load power is a very important graph where you are finding uh, four uh, gear uh, power relation it is shown here so you are finding the first gear first gear is having a uh, speed quite less so this uh, peak point so this peak point is coming towards around 40 so first gear is having uh, a base speed as 40 second gear is having base speed around uh, 60 third gear is having base speed around 100 you are finding here fourth gear is having base speed around 140 or 150 around right and we are finding there are two uh, graphs which are going up this is actually called as resistance graph so whatever you are finding here so this graph which are going up and little coming down going up and coming down these are nothing but the uh, power in each gear and then uh, resistance power on a, a grade 5% grade and resistor power on a flat road these are shown by this exponential type of increasing graph and you are finding at any time at any time uh, if you're just taking the uh, vertical projection let's say we are taking the vertical projection here somewhere around here okay so you are finding that whenever the vehicle is on flat road okay whenever the vehicle is on flat road at that time 
uh, to achieve this speed this speed is around let's say 105 so whenever the vehicle is on flat road that is towards the right side whatever graph is there exponentially increasing to achieve uh, around 105 uh, kilometer per hour speed we have to use only 15 kilowatt power so this graph you have to read so this is the graph going out going up uh, this is the graph for resistance on a flat road so to achieve around 105 kilometer per hour so 105 is in between 100 and, 100 and 120 so to achieve around 105 kilometer per hour speed we have to give or we have to generate around 15 kilowatt by the engine but whenever the vehicle is on uh, grade 5 percent grade that means 5 percent is the gradient tan theta is equal to 5.05 uh, in that case to generate uh, the same speed okay the same speed is around 105 kilometer per hour in that case the vehicle has to produce 40 kilowatt power so this is the strength of the graph if you can read the graph properly it tells you a lot of thing so again i am going to explain that is whenever uh, just compare this graph this graph is a flat road uh, resistance power graph and this graph is uh, this is the five percent grade power graph so if you are seeing that this line is drawn this line is actually line uh, which is the power requirement for around 105 kilometer per hour speed you are finding that if we are on flat road at the time around 15 kilowatt power if you are generating we can achieve 105 uh, kilometer per hour speed but whenever we are on 5 percent grade at the time to generate this 105 kilometer per hour speed we have to use 40 kilowatt power the very important thing and you are finding that to uh, whenever the vehicle is in uh, a grade road at that time that 105 kilowatt will be produced by the third gear and whenever the vehicle is in uh, fourth gear whenever the vehicle is in fourth gear at that time it will be easily be able to produce 105 kilometer per hour so gear pattern changes power changes power requirement changes so more is the grade more power we have to generate uh, in the y-axis to produce higher speed so we have seen two three different types of graphs the same thing was depicted there but this graph is uh, very easily understandable so what is seen is what is showing is figure shows the load power versus uh, speed graph for a 1500 kg car on a flat road and on a road with 5 percent grade so this right side graph is uh, on the flat road and the little bit left side graph is uh, resistance uh, power on a 5 percent grade road it is seen that on the flat road a speed of 160 kilometer per hour needs 43 kilowatt so again there is another comparison just say this 160 kilowatt 160 kilometer per hour speed so take it above uh, we are finding that uh, this 160 kilometer per hour this speed is produced by the fourth gear okay and how much is the uh, power required in the fourth gear you just project this thing in the x-axis you are coming somewhere here so that is 43 kilowatt in details uh, this graph will be shown in the next slide also there also we will see so it is seen that on a flat road a speed of 160 kilometer per hour needs power of 43 kilowatt that means this 160 kilometer per hour you project up and they take take on the y-axis you will be finding that a power required is around 43 kilowatt the power curves of the 43 kilowatt engine with a multi-gear transmission are also plotted in the figure so you are finding that engine power is uh, one two three four so engine peak power is same but that engine peak power is produced for every gear at a higher speed okay so first gear that engine peak power is produced at 40 km per hour second gear peak power is produced at 60 km per hour third and fourth gear it is produced at around 100 and 145 km per hour so these are the changes in the gear so for analysis the power curves of 43 kilowatt engine with a multi-gear transmission are also plotted so these are the four uh, gear power system so on a 5% grade road that means uh, in this graph actually 5% grade road the vehicle can reach maximum speed of 103 and 110 uh, in 4th gear and 3rd gear res respectively so you are finding uh, whenever the required uh, power or whenever we are talking about 5% grade at that time maximum power by the vehicle is around 103 and 110 so these two lines are there this left line is 103 and this is 110 so this is the 43 kilowatt uh, power in the fourth gear it is uh, achieved at 110 kilometer per hour and the third gear it is around 103 kilometer per hour so we are finding that but uh, uh, next slide it will be explaining so this is 103 kilometer per hour okay uh, speed and uh, there is another thing uh, another important things we are going to see from this graph
so whenever it is 160 km per hour you take this 160 km per hour at the top then you project it in the x axis this is the 43 kilowatt and this 43 kilowatt actually you are finding this point so this point is nothing but on a 5% grid here the maximum speed is 110 km per hour and in case of fourth gear it is around 160 km per hour so this we are finding so it is seen that on a flat road speed of 160 km per hour will be produced by 43 kilowatt but whenever it is on steep of 5% at the time by the 43 kilowatt only 110 uh, km per hour speed will be produced so these are the things which are very important so uh, read this graph analyze this graph very properly and we have to explain this graph in the exam uh, for explanation of uh, vehicle speed versus power graph there is another graph which is called as a vehicle speed versus power but here you will be finding that every gear is showing some kind of optimal efficiency region so this is the graph of optimal efficiency region and this is the optimal efficiency region in the first gear second gear third gear and fourth gear what can we understand from this graph so it is the same graph but many contours are shown many the power contours and efficiency contours are shown for every gear and uh, in this case you can uh, find out the speed of around uh, 100 and uh, you can say 105 or 103 km per hour you are finding that for a uh, flat road this 103 km per hour can be produced by 15 kilowatt around 15 kilowatt or 13 kilowatt power so the same point same speed you can project up so what you are finding is for flat road flat road so this is a graph of the flat road resistance power on the flat road point a so you are finding that that 103 or 105 km per hour speed can be produced by 13 kilowatt but the same speed if you want to produce in uh, power on a grid that is 5 percent grid in that case you have to use around 38 to 39 kilowatt uh, energy so point b is for uh, grid road power and point a is for flat road power so just see the difference same speed which will be required around 25 kilowatt power more so this 5 percent grid is responsible for uh, that more than 25 kilowatt power uh, from the same engine so this is the difference in flat road and uh, a grid road so more is the grid 5 percent grid means 0 0.05 tan theta if you are saying 20 percent grid uh, this will increase like anything so sometime it is possible that that very uh, high grade of 20 percent vehicle will not be able to ride that very high grade it is possible okay so you are finding that 5 percent grade what is the maximum speed maximum speed is around 120 or so so if you want to uh, ride on this road or if you want to drive on this grade road 5 percent grade road and you want to say that i want 140 kilometer per hour it is not possible because you just project this 140 km per hour at the top and it is not actually coinciding with this 5% grade road that means you cannot have 140 km per hour speed whenever you are on 5% grade road so all these things we know those who drive they can understand whenever we are uh, passing through a grade road or passing through a hill grade means gradient that means you are going up through a road whenever we are on grade road or hill at that time we cannot increase the speed as per our wish because the car is having a limitation so the same thing is shown by this graph so previous graph and this graph together in slide number three and slide number four together can be explained and for every gear there is a efficiency region for every gear there is a efficiency region that means if you are driving the vehicle within this speed range so this speed range that means fourth gear you are driving in the speed range of around 55 up to around 85 so whenever you are in the fourth gear uh, in the same vehicle if you are uh, riding within uh, 55 to 85 you will be getting a very high efficiency in terms of uh, the fuel consumption so that is why these contours are very important so let's see what does this slide say so this slide says engine power required at constant speed on flat road and 5 percent grade road with engine fuel consumption map at each gear so at each gear how much is the engine fuel consumption they have shown and this centrally this elliptical area is the maximum efficiency region at that gear that means if you are in the fourth gear if you are driving between this 55 and 85 you will be having maximum fuel efficiency so this figure is same as the previous figure so in the previous slide whatever figure we have shown this figure and the next figure is the same only in the previous figure every uh, gear they have shown uh, they have been shown with some more contours and these contours are nothing but the fuel efficiency 
so this figure is same as the previous figure with the addition of the engine fuel consumption map at each gear this figure can be used to analyze the influence of transmission gears on vehicle performance such as vehicle acceleration gradability and fuel consumption so previously discussed engine power should be equivalent uh, sorry it should be evaluated so that it meets the average power requirement while driving in a stop and go pattern in a drive cycle the average load power of a vehicle can be calculated by so this is the equation that you have to write while you are explaining the engine design parameters for parallel hybrid electric drivetrain and the average load power equation of a vehicle it is very important so you are finding that there is a time integration so there is a energy mgfrv this is nothing but the rolling resistance loss half rho a c d a v cube this is nothing but the uh, loss for the aerodynamic resistance and d m v d v d t this is nothing but the power for traction so this is the traction power and losses actually this mgfr and aerodynamic resistance they get subtracted from this so the total net uh, energy is actually found by integrating this instantaneous parts over 0 to t so this is giving you the total energy this integration is giving you the total energy for traction and whenever it is divided by t or it is actually differentiated with respect to t uh, the whole thing you are finding actually the average power okay so power is nothing but energy by time so this total integration is giving us the energy considering the losses and the traction force and then whenever you are uh, dividing it with respect to time you are finding average power for vehicle movement and uh, pave so what is pave what is the equation about pave varies with the degree of regenerative braking fuel regenerative uh, braking recovers all the energy consumed in braking at zero regenerative braking the average power is larger than the generated with full regenerated braking so very important line is given at the end at zero regenerative braking the average power is larger than the generated with full regenerative braking uh, so these are some of the considerations which are used for uh, engine design in case of hybrid electric drivetrain so engine design parameters in a parallel drivetrain engine is mechanically coupled to the drive wheels so that we have seen because this is a uh, torque coupling kind of a thing hence the engine rotating speed varies with vehicle speed so whenever the vehicle speed varies this is actually taken to the engine so as in parallel drivetrain engine and uh, wheels they are mechanically coupled through a, a mechanical coupler in between we are finding that whenever the vehicle changes its speed that directly affects the engine speed on the other hand the engine power with full throttle uh, varies with engine rotating speed here the engine power at full throttle is associated with vehicle speed <clears throat> so if engine works with the full throttle that means uh, full energy is given to the engine vehicle speed also will be very high does not mean that efficiency will be high so whenever the engine power is maximum at that time vehicle speed also will be maximum but efficiency will not be maximum because for maximum efficiency there is a certain zone uh, which is less than the maximum output region so maximum output is not equal to maximum efficiency that you have to remember thus the determination of engine power is a very important line engine power determination to meet the average power in a drive cycle is not as straightforward as the series hybrid because in series hybrid engine was decoupled from the wheels but in case of uh, parallel coupling or parallel hybrid engine is coupled with the wheel so whenever we are trying to find out the average power or maximum efficiency or maximum output at that time wheel and engine they are coupled together so both these effects has to be considered in that case so in which the engine operating point can be fixed the average power that the engine produces at full throttle full throttle means maximum fuel is given to the engine so the average power that the engine produces at full throttle can be calculated by the formula maximum average so average mag, average of maximum uh, power uh, so that is equal to pev dt integrated over time t 1 by t so pe of v what is the significance of this formula so t is the total time in the drive cycle so 0 to t so vehicle is uh, driven for 0 to t time and then pe of v so pe of v this is a function this is the engine power and this engine power for uh, vehicular speed forward traction speed of v pe v is the engine power at full throttle so v is the output uh, uh, speed of the vehicle when uh, 
the full throttle that means maximum amount of fuel is given to the engine so pe of v is the engine power at full throttle uh, which is a function of vehicle speed with different transmission gear ratios that means there are different gear ratios uh, but then also we are uh, getting different power but we are averaging that power and we want to maximize it so uh, maximization of average power first we have to find this this is equal to p of v dt integrated over 0 to t t is the drive cycle time and the whole energy is actually divided by t then we are getting power so energy divided by time is equal to power so p max av is 1 by t integration 0 to t p of v dt so this was all about uh, the design uh, parameters and uh, how to go for the design of the primary element which is nothing but the engine based design next we are going to see parametric design for pps or secondary power source in the design of pps or secondary power source uh, the main parameter that we track that is actually called as a state of charge so PPS design mainly includes the design of power capacity and energy capacity and what is the definition of power it is energy by time so power capacity design is somewhat straightforward uh, it is comparatively easier a terminal power of PPS must be greater than the input electric power of the electric motor so PPS must serve uh, power which is greater than the load power load power means whatever is asked by the driver or whatever is asked by the vehicle uh, from the source so the terminal power of the PPS that means the deliverable power must be greater than the input electric power to the electric motor it happens automatically uh, because electric motor is the point at which the demand is placed by the vehicle so what is uh, the input electric power of the electric motor the equation is PS that is the uh, PPS power that means whatever is the stored energy in the battery that should be greater than PM by eta M eta M is the efficiency of the motor power rating so PS greater than equal to PM by eta M if it is greater it is very good at least PS should be equal to PM by eta M the energy capacity design of the PPS is closely associated with the electrical energy consumption in various driving patterns so there may be there are many two driving pattern one is uh, the urban driving pattern and there is the highway driving pattern and uh, there is a critical driving pattern which is through hill or through jungle or through some kind of muddy or clay land and all those kind of thing so under normal driving conditions there are two one is city one is uh, highway so uh, the energy capacity designer PPS is closely associated with the electrical energy consumption in various driving patterns mainly full load acceleration and typical urban drive cycles so urban drive cycle is a stop go kind of a thing and full load acceleration we find in highway during the acceleration period so that is uh, generally happening in the highway driving the energy is drawn from the PPS energy drawn from the PPS is called as EPPS and energy drawn from engine which is called as E engine can be calculated along with the calculation of acceleration time and distance so the formula of PPS energy is given by PM by eta M so PM is motor power eta M is the uh, motor efficiency so whenever I am doing PM by eta M and I am integrating it actually this is giving you energy for the PPS for engine it is PE that means average energy of the engine so the average power of the engine if you are integrating over time then it is called as a engine uh, energy okay so here PM by eta M is the uh, PPS power integrated over time it is giving engine by PPS what the uh, PPS can supply and PE that is the uh, energy of the uh, sorry power of the engine that power when it is integrated over time it is giving you the engine energy now PM and PE are powers drawn uh, from the motor and from the engine so EPPS is the power drawn from the motor E engine is the power drawn from the engine figure below shows the energy is drawn from the PPS and the engine in a period of full acceleration uh, so here x axis you are fine uh, you are finding actually the vehicle speed which is in kilometer per hour and y axis is actually energy consumption and there are two sources one source is the energy from the engine you are finding that this graph is the graph below so there are three graphs 
the middle graph is actually acceleration time so acceleration time definition is time taken by the vehicle to accelerate from uh, 0 km per hour to 100 km per hour whatever is the time taken by that that is called as acceleration time ta okay smaller is the value of ta means it is having better pickup so here you are finding two graphs with respect to ta you are finding that engine graph engine energy graph is quite flatter that means engine is generally uh, giving you a constant energy or uh, not very highly dynamic energy uh, that is what is supplied by the engine that means uh, energy from the engine is not changing very dynamically okay whereas you are finding that energy from pps it is having very high in rate of increment so these two features you have to understand that is engine uh, energy is uh, almost constant or it does not vary very tremendously but pps energy varies very tremendously and you are finding there are uh, two axis things so energy consumption is given by kilowatt hour that is given by the y axis left and y axis right is actually acceleration distance that means uh, uh, within how much distance uh, the acceleration is happening okay so that is given by uh, y axis of the right side so uh, from this graph we can uh, conclude that is energy from the pps it has to be it is actually uh, fetch from the pps at a very higher rate and energy fetch from the engine is uh, fetched at a slower rate or lower rate so energy drawn from pps and engine during the full acceleration period we are finding here so uh, in the next slide we will see uh, a very typical case that is the same graph is shown here and it is actually um, one case is taken that is at the uh, 120 kilometer per hour uh, speed so here it is around 120 kilometer per hour and the same line is gone up and you are finding how much is the uh, pps uh, kwh at 120 kilometer per hour so we are finding that at 120 120 kilometer per hour we are finding that uh, energy from the engine is around uh, 0.1 kilowatt hour okay so you take this 120 kilometer per hour speed you just project it upward wherever it is cutting the uh, energy from engine line that you see on the x-axis so this is around 0.1 kilowatt hour that is 100 watt hour but the same thing 120 kilometer per hour if you are projecting up and if you are going to uh, the y-axis you will be finding it's around 0.3 so graph shows the energies drawn from the pps and the engine in a period of full acceleration along with the value of speed for a passenger car at the speed of 120 km per hour about 0.3 kilowatt hour energy is drawn from the pps so that is what you are finding so 0.3 kilowatt hour energy almost 0.3 kilowatt hour energy is drawn from the pps and kind of 0.1 kilowatt hour energy is drawn from the uh, engine so total energy requirement is a 0.4 kilowatt hour among them 0.3 kilowatt hour is taken from the pps and 0.1 kilowatt hour is taken from the engine so that you are finding that higher is the speed more power will be drawn from the ppps source that is what this uh, graph is talking about and acceleration time also is increasing kind of in a steady fashion that you are finding so in this case uh, there are some more uh, conclusions that can be drawn from this graph the energy capacity of the pps must also meet the requirement while driving in a stop and go pattern that means whenever the vehicle is driving through the city there will be a lot of times the vehicle has to be stopped because there is bigger traffic or huge traffic in the city so at that time for stopping of the vehicle whatever uh, power or braking power or uh, electrical braking power is required by the vehicle that is also fetched from the ppps so in other words the energy in the pps will not be fully discharged okay so it will not be fully charged it will not be fully discharged so pps will be in a kind of a halfway uh, discharge state okay and whenever possible uh, this uh, half discharged or uh, half soc or 50 percent or 60 percent soc of the pps has to be replenished replenished means uh, it has to be taken to 100 percent so in the uh, every possible chance the primary source or engine has to think of uh, filling up the uh, discharged pps uh, percentage so while doing all this uh, supplying the bumper power and all in this case the pps gets discharged and that we are supposed to fulfill 
as soon as there is a possibility we have to fulfill uh, that means the engine source has to fulfill uh, that charge to 100 percent the energy changes in the pps can be obtained by this formula so how much uh, energy is uh, varying or what is the energy variation in the ppps that thing is found by p ppps charged minus p ppps discharged so this much is actually the energy uh, given out by the ppas source so you are integrating it over time that means how much is the power given out by uh, the ppas source and that we are integrating over time and that is giving you the uh, variation in the energy in the ppas source so where p ppas ch is uh, the charging and p ppas discharging are instantaneous charging and discharging power from the ppas with a given control strategy the charging and discharging power of the ppas can be obtained by a drive train simulation in a typical drive cycle so next two slides we are going to see two different drive cycles where the calculation of uh, engine power calculation of pps power calculation of motor power all the things are shown so all the basic formulas are already given to you in the previous 6 7 slides so last thing is how much how to calculate the variation in the pps power energy variation that is given by this formula so these two slides are going to have the same diagram that is slide number 8 and 9 this is slide number 8 so slide number 8 and 9 are going to have the same diagram it is actually talking about ftp 75 urban drive cycle how do you know this is urban drive cycle because you are finding the top characteristic is vehicle speed uh, versus a uh, time graph so x axis is time for all these four graphs and y axis is vehicle speed and you are finding that vehicle speed is never uh, steadily increasing or it is never staying st uh, staying steady okay so it is increasing and decreasing decreasing means it is brake increasing means it is acceleration again it is increasing and going up to around 80 km per hour again it is decreasing and there is stop go stop go stop go kind of thing so here between these two points you are finding some constant speed is maintained around 50 km per hour but again stop go stop go kind of a thing so here there is happening some electrical braking regenerative braking also might happen depending on the slope of the road so whatever four graphs are shown the top graph is vehicle speed versus time next graph is according loop correspondingly engine power versus time that means whenever this second big cycle is coming how is the engine power changing okay so we are finding here bigger uh, vehicle speed we are achieving for a constant period over time here engine power is also more and it is not only engine power but there is a motor power also okay so motor power is actually coming from the pps so energy variation in pps this is the main thing we are trying to find out because this motor uh, is actually driven by both pps and the engine power so second graph is for engine power third graph is for motor power that is the driving motor power and fourth graph is nothing but the energy variation and you are finding that the energy variation in ppps that means e uh, whatever uh, equation shown here at the top e p p p s c h minus p p p s discharge so charging power minus discharging power that graph is shown here and that change in charging and discharging is 0.11 kilowatt hour it is given here energy variation in p p p s kilowatt hour so let us uh, go through uh, what is written about this four graphs together so this is actually vehicle speed engine power motor power energy variation in p p s storage for a FTP 75 urban drive cycle with max SOC control strategy. That means we are always trying to refill uh, whatever is the discharge happening in the PPS. We are always trying to refill uh, by using the primary source. So primary source is nothing but engine. So what all things are uh, figured out here? Let us see. So figure shows the passenger car example where maximum energy change in PPS is 0.11 kilowatt hour you are finding here maximum energy change is 0.11 kilowatt hour which is far less than uh, full load acceleration 0.3 kilowatt hour so where is this 0.3 kilowatt hour is coming here it is coming that is whenever maximum speed is there 120 at the time ppps is actually uh, asking for 0.3 kilowatt hour okay so this is what is the maximum uh, uh, power asked from the uh, ppps but in in this cycle what you are finding is 0.11 kilowatt hour is the variation in uh, uh, this uh, PPPS power. So 0.3 kilowatt hour is the maximum uh, energy asked from this uh, source and 0.11 kilowatt hour is actually the uh, change in top and bottom levels of power from the PPS.
So thus energy consumption in full load acceleration determines the energy capacity of the energy storage. This conclusion is only valid for maximum SOC control strategy. So we know there are two control strategy. One is maximum SOC control strategy and one is uh, thermostat based on of uh, control strategy. So whatever strategies we are showing here where this uh, maximum energy changes PPS is calculated as 0.11 kilowatt hour. This is actually the strategy of max SOC control strategy. That means for which we had this very big flow chart and graph and all those things. That strategy we are talking about. When other control strategies and drive cycles are used, the conclusion may be different. So for max SOC FTP uh, driving cycle, we are finding that uh, max energy change in PPS is about 0.11 kilowatt hour or 110 watt hour. Last conclusion, not all the energy stored in the PPS can be fully used to generate the sufficient power for the drive 10. So this we know that uh, the PPS source will never get discharged completely because there is a mechanism that is whenever the PPS source falls below the discharge threshold, again uh, there will be replenishing or refilling of the SOC source by the primary source engine. Now. Uh, if there are different cases, that means what can be the PPS source? So PPS can source can be battery. So far always we are talking that battery is the PPS source, but it can be ultra capacitor, it can be ultra high speed flywheel. So for all these three cases, that is secondary source can be battery. What is the uh, conclusion for that? Secondary source can be ultra capacitor, secondary source can be ultra high speed flywheel. So in this FTP 75, always the primary source is engine. So there is the engine power graph. Uh, secondary source can be uh, battery, ultra high speed flywheel, ultra capacitor. What are the comments for each of those sources as secondary power source that we are going to see in this slide. So if batteries are used as PPS, so PPS always we are talking about battery, but not necessarily that PPS will be always battery. But if batteries are used as PPS, a low state of charge severely limits their power output and at the same time leads to low efficiency due to the increase in internal resistance. So what conclusion you are finding is if battery is used as a secondary source or PPS in that case uh, batteries are having higher internal resistance. That means in this case what we will find is it will uh, cause low efficiency due to the increase in internal resistance. So this is one shortcoming of battery as PPPS. And what is that? That is low resistance, efficiency will low, this will reduce the power output. Second case, what is the uh, positive or negative point of ultra capacitor? So in this case, ultra capacitor is used as a PPS. In this case, a low SOC results in low terminal voltage that affects the performance of the traction motor. So we have seen at the starting of uh, this second uh, PPS uh, design part, that is always the PPS uh, energy stored should be greater than equal to PM divided by eta M. So in this case, if ultra capacitor is used, what we are finding is the PPS terminal voltage is not always very high compared to the motor power. So in this case, it is saying that uh, if ultra capacitor is used as a PPS, low SOC in uh, ultra capacitor uh, causes low terminal voltage of the SOC that affects the performance of the traction motor. So drawback of the battery is because of its internal resistance, PPS source efficiency will be less. Drawback of ultra capacitor is uh, whenever PPS source is used, its terminal voltage will be less. That will actually harm the performance of the traction motor. So what is the third option? Third option is a flywheel, ultra high speed flywheel. So if a flywheel is used in case of PPS, a low SOC means the low flywheel speed at which the terminal voltage of the electric machine functioning as the uh, heat e e energy exchange port is low. So uh, other than battery or ultra capacitor, there is a third option, flywheel can be used as a PPS. So in this case, low SOC means flywheel speed will be low, which will actually reduce the terminal voltage of the electric machine and functions as the energy exchange port is low. That means always we have to ensure that PPS, so if PPS can be battery, PPS can be ultra capacitor, PPS can be flywheel, whatever happens, never the PPS source uh, terminal voltage should be low. This we have to ensure always. So whenever there is a variance, whenever there is a variance of charging and discharging power and the discharge power is reducing the overall SOC of the PPS, we have to try to refill the PPS energy as soon as possible. Okay, so either by the primary source or by regenerative braking 
or by external source always we have to replenish or refill the pps energy as soon as possible conclusion only part of the energy stored in the pps can be available for the use it can be represented by soc or state of energy okay so only part of the energy stored in the pps can be available for use so we cannot make the whole pps discharge completely that can never happen so if the pps is charged 100% then it starts discharging uh, we should come to maximum 60 to 70% below uh, than the maximum level so we can never take out the whole energy from the pps source it may be battery it may be ultra capacitor it may be flywheel but never we should use the whole energy from the ppps in that case the pps source will get damaged and uh, recovering it uh, will become very difficult so this was a small study actually uh, this part these two slides will not be asked in the exam but uh, just with respect to a drive cycle what can be the electrical uh, power of the engine what can be the motor output what can be the uh, energy variation in pps all those things are shown and some of the conclusions related to different types of uh, secondary source are shown here now we have come to the last slide how to calculate the energy capacity of the pps it is given by ecpps ecpps means energy c stands for capacity of pps and the formula is e dis max that is maximum discharge from the pps source divided by state of charge at uh, t minus state of charge at b so t is at the top and b is at the bottom so in case of thermostat based control we have decided uh, maximum level of soc should be 100% that is soc is fully charged and bottom level of the soc was 70% so ec pps that is energy capacity of the pps is equal to maximum discharge energy divided by top soc that is 100 minus bottom soc now bottom soc depends on the designer if it, if it is kept at uh, 70 that means soc soc t minus soc b will be 100 minus 70 that is equal to 30 so that 30 percent will be represented as 0.3 here in the denominator so ec pps is equal to e dis max divided by 0.3 so ec pps will be a lot greater than e dis max so to interpret this formulas the energy capacity of the pps is given by the above formula e dis max is the allowed maximum energy discharging from the pps generally if you are saying e dis max uh, at 70 percent you should stop in that case uh, for 70 percent discharge how much is the energy taken out from the pps that we should know and we have to write at the numerator of the formula soc t and soc soc b are the top and bottom lines of soc of the pps so soc t is generally 100 percent one soc b is 70 percent point seven so soc t minus soc b will be point three in case of it is max point three kilowatt hour so it is max is given point three kilowatt in the graph at 120 kilometer per hour it was coming to be point three kilowatt hour we assume that 30 percent of the total energy of the pps can be used when the minimum energy capacity of the pps is 1 kilowatt hour so this is just a case or this is just a uh, model case which is uh, given here that is how the energy capacity of the pps is to be designed so in this lecture uh, we conclude here with uh, two design considerations the first design considerations were done for the engine design and second design considerations were seen for uh, pps energy capacity design so next lecture which will be the last lecture of this module and which will be the last lecture of this uh, whole course uh, we are going to see the design of uh, electric motor and if there are some other design parameters we are going to see them so that's all uh, as far as this lecture number 33 is concerned thank you